the next point, which is thought stopping, which is something he touches on in this book and accuses Scientology of, which is the mind control research that was done by uh, do Dr. Robert Lifton during the during the Red Scare era, um, and um, you know that has all to do with ideological conditioning. Um, where you keep people ide ideologically in a box by getting them to reject any data from the outside by labeling it. And so you label it and dismiss it. Um, and Lifton uses the example with the communist Chinese of any Western thought that comes in, they just dismiss it as bourgeoisie thinking. And, and it just doesn't enter the person's thinking stream. Um, you know, effectively, by the time you get into three, four chapters into this book, he is effectively applying that or getting the reader to apply that towards Scientology because he's already labeled, you know, the, the, the founder and the, and, the, and, and the core of the subject, delusional, imaginary, and, and all these different things to the point where um, just the tone and tenor of it throughout the rest of the book becomes, if it's coming from Scientology, it's immediately dismissed. And he'll even take things that, that are said um, that he may have gotten from earlier, uh, the earlier New Yorker interview uh, from, from the church spokesperson uh, or gotten from you know, church publications or whatever and just it puts him in that light that, well, this comes from Scientology. And, he, and, and so it's just sort of facilely dismissed. And then finally, throughout the book, um, the guy uses this sophistry, um, which depends upon these earlier devices of you know us versus them credibility determinations and um, the thought stopping techniques, where um, where you know he's making in a in a narrative that's being presented as sort of a chronological chronological and objective narrative, it's. It's got these clever, fallacious arguments and conclusions being reached um, through, throughout, throughout the, the book. And then he relies on, on the, um, the only subjectivity he, he allows are people that are clearly um, either did, never got the subject, you know, and they swear they never got anything out of it, or somebody, and then that would be Paul Haggis, who clearly, and I'll show, you know, throughout here, really didn't, there's all indication he really didn't really understand the subject. And Hannah Whitfield, who of course is a, a you know, she's just a drama queen. She just is just giving everything this very dramatic kind of you know shocked kind of um, characterization. And of course he doesn't disclose her bias that she in fact for years after she left Scientology valued Scientology. After she left the church, she still valued Scientology so much so that she brought a suit to try to sort of to try to take over the the ownership of the technology and destroy the church in the bargain by by suing it for a billion dollars. None of that um, is covered. <laughs> We're on page ten, and he says Haggis said he wanted to be a writer. That's what he wanted to do when he got into Scientology. But if you go to the film, and this goes to projection too, in the book. Larry Wright says Paul Haggis wants to be a writer. In the film, Alex Gibney, what does Paul Haggis tell Alex Gibney? He wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. So what, Paul Haggis, will, I guess, will say anything to ingratiate whoever he's talking to. I mean, if I'm a garbage man, he, he'd probably tell me he wanted to be a garbage man, right? A writer to write, a documentarian to, uh, to Gibney. <laughs> 